Our next speaker is Martin Casado. Is there anybody here who does not know who Martin Casado is? Okay, all right, here he comes. Um, so Marcin is, uh, Martin is C a CTO of uh, Nicira Networks. He's got an interesting history. Um, he uh, had actually quite a promising career in data security and government secrecy and things, but uh, he wasn't challenged, so he came back uh, to school and got a PhD at Stanford University and soon discovered that he's used to programming things and he couldn't program the damn network. The boxes wouldn't let him in and that made him mad. He said, this is not right. I'm a, I'm a programmer. I should be able to program this, make it do what I want. So, so Martin just went home and invented OpenFlow. So he is the inventor. I'd like to describe Martin as the Plato of networking. We're only giving him 20 minutes here because if he had you for an hour, your brain would hurt like it does with me when I talk to him long enough. So uh, today it's rumored that he's actually going to talk about NYSERA and what they do about overlays. And I'm hoping that's true. So Martin, come tell us if it's true. All right, can you guys, can you guys hear me? You okay? So I am going to talk a little bit about what we do in NYSERA, um, but I'm going to talk kind of more generally about a trend that I think is important for all of us to, to know about in, um, uh, in the data center. And so I've broken up the talk into two pieces. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is this trend, which actually is not um, SDN, but it's this movement towards overlays and what that means. And then in the second part of the talk, I'm going to talk about how this is going to interact or change or um, cooperate with SDN and, and, and OpenFlow. Okay, so the first three slides are all background. I'm, I'm not trying to pander. I just want to get us all on the same page. Um, so when you talk about data centers, the focus moves from the micro or the diminutive, of course, to the macro. So we think much less about like how fast is a single CPU and much more about how much work throughput can I get from a building, right? Or, much less about how much uh, capacity can I stick on a single hard drive or how much data can I consume and process at scale, right? I mean, this is the, the movement towards, towards data centers. And as part of this macro level vision or macro level focus um, has emerged this really informal notion of a resource pool. So a resource pool is uh, very roughly, if you take a collection of devices and I can treat it like a uniform pool of resources that I can provision, repartition on demand automatically, right? It's just this consumable bit of, of, of resources. Um, and of course, for a high functioning data center, you want to have these at every point uh, in the infrastructure. You want it for compute, you want it for storage, you want it for networking. And the properties that you want out of a resource pool, I like to call the laws of any, which is you normally want to run any workload anywhere you want over any type of hardware. And of course, you want it to not suck, meaning that you want it to be fast and cheap and, and, and so forth. So, and this has almost become a canard. I call it the Hamilton quote. Um, networking makes in data centers treating things uh, like a generic resource pool Difficult, not just treating the network itself as a resource pool, but because it interconnects compute and storage, it actually affects the efficiencies you can get out of those. And I know that most of you or all of you are familiar with these problems, so I'm just going to go through them very quickly. But if you rely on the network to do isolation, you're limited by the limitations of VLANs, which we all know if you're going to do security, you've got a lot of additional state in the network you have to manage, which is going to limit things like mobility and dynamic provisioning. Um, SLAs, more state in the network, that's going to have to follow things if they move around. Uh, Oversubscription, canonical problem, will limit where I place workloads because I don't have a uniform fabric anymore. I've got a highly segmented fabric, and so I've got a bin placement problem. I've got less efficiency. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of even forwarding state change that happened. Like, you probably couldn't see that was service routing. And as a result, if you look at the aggregate at the macro scale, not the micro scale, if you look at the micro scale, you actually don't often, because of the network, you often get net, uh, data centers that are less efficient, right? Sometimes it's very difficult. Uh, sometimes you're limited in the workload you can run. For example, you may require L2 adjacency. You can't have it. Or you may want to have one very large logical network, and you can't have it. Um, you're often limited in where you can place a workload or a VM um, or where you can move it again, because of the network. Um, 
Over any hardware, clearly a lot of these provisioning APIs are vendor specific. Um, of the service models are vendor specific. Um, and of course, because often we have people running around to provisioning things, it's very, very difficult to do quickly and efficiently. So there's nothing new in anything that I've presented so far. I just wanted to kind of lay it out. So one way that the community has dealt with this for actually for decades, but it's becoming more important, is to build an overlay. And so the idea of an overlay is you consume a lot of the functions that would otherwise be in the network into a layer in software at the edge. Things like isolation, mobility, load distribution, um, rendezvous, service discovery, a lot of that gets sucked up into the edge. And for those that know me, they know that you know, for my day job, I work on overlays in the virtual networking sense. And I'll talk a little bit about that, but I wanna talk about overlays more generally. I wanna talk about overlays such as like an HTTP overlay, um, which is a classic way of building a web data center. Any sort of distributed compute harness where um, you use very simple physical fabrics um, is, is another overlay where a lot of this partitioning and functionality has moved up to the stack. Um, and of course, virtual network overlays, which are very popular now, but it's only one use case for overlays. What's interesting, if you look at the argument for the overlay, and I, I, I like to call that centerpiece the fabric, though people kind of disagree with that terminology, but like I view a, a network that can be treated as a resource pool as a fabric. If you look at the argument for an overlay in a fabric, it looks a lot like SDN. You have a lot of the same arguments. Functionality is at the edge. It's implemented in software. So you've got the software um, upgrade and development cycle. Um, it allows you to use like fairly simple and cheap hardware that isn't difficult to configure. Um, decouples operations from proprietary interfaces for management. Um, very natural way of integrating um, L4 through 7 services because you already have tunnels, you already have direction of traffic. Um, it could often avoid high levels of aggregation because it's pushed to the edge that is simple hardware. And another thing which is, is actually unique and very important is you can take advantage of edge level semantics. And what I mean by that is if I am starting my overlay at the edge and I'm sitting on the server, and especially if I'm an application aware overlay like HTTP or like a distributed compute harness, I know a lot more about what the application wants. I know whether, for example, it, um, um, if it's gonna have a move event or things are gonna come and go, and I often know that beforehand. So there's actually very powerful arguments in support of using um, overlays. So the question is, is where does SDN fit in this? I mean, are they competitive? Are they complementary? And, and my view is they're totally compatible. And you know, I, I spend probably 50% of my time outbound working with very large data centers, and almost all of them I see some form of an overlay. And a lot of the times these overlays are doing a lot of the things that you want to do with, with SDN. So what I want to talk about from the last half of the talk is how do these things, I mean, are they ships in the night? Are these things that should cooperate? And what I'm going to argue by the end of the talk is with only very minor adjustments, I think that we can incorporate the notion of fabrics into, into SDN. Okay, so let's talk about where SDN fits in this, in this kind of broad notion of of um, an overlay. So there's two places where today SDN is actually being applied in data centers that use overlays. One of them is to build and construct the fabric, the physical network, and the second one is to manage the overlay. And I'm gonna talk uh, about both of these in turn. So let me first talk about SDN and the fabric. Now, I wanna be very clear. When I talk about SDN and the fabric, what I'm talking about is using SDN to build dumb bandwidth, not to do interesting things in the network. So assuming you wanted to build a data center that used an overlay um, uh, is the problem I'm gonna talk about, right? So it's not that I'm saying that you should use an overlay, I'm assuming you've already decided to use an overlay, right? So it's not like um, this is a, a discussion of, of, of overlays being worse or less than a, uh, a SDN controlled data center. But if you did wanna use if you did want to use SDN to build a fabric, in my experience, and there are a number of guys that have gone and done this, you have to make some decisions uh, uh, about where the solution space, the solution sits in the design space that limits the flexibility of SDN. So for example, um, you probably have to push all of the state proactively. So we have a production deployment with a you know, very, very large data center. One of their customers has a rendezvous server that sources hundreds of thousands of flows per second, um, and the average flow size is two packets. 
and these things move all the time. I mean, in these types of environments, you have to be proactive, which means you lose a little bit of flexibility of, of interposition and a finer granularity, clearly. Um, often to take advantage of these more rich topologies, you've got to use multipathing, which means if I'm going to try and put any state there, any policy or QA state, I have to manage it as things move around. I've got to replicate it. Um, if you want to minimize the forwarding tables and the size of the lookup, you probably want to do kind of destination only forwarding uh, with aggregation, right? And this is probably the simplest harbor for the problem of building a fabric. And so what you end up with is something that looks an awful lot like L3, but now I've got this kind of distributed control channel or this remote control channel I've got to maintain as well. So in my experience, if you just want to build dumb bandwidth, that's your goal. Now, if your goal is something else, SDN is fantastic. But if you just want to build dumb bandwidth, it's not clear that SDN is a, is a great fit, which is why many of the overlays today run on top of just L3 networks that are very simple using IGPs that have been around for, for 30 years. On the other hand, as, as Igor pointed out, there's still this enormous OAM or operations and management problem, things like bring up management to the care and feeding of a physical device. And that is something that a distributed control protocol like an IGP doesn't, doesn't take care of. And for this, SDN is a great fit. And I know that the config working group knows this, and this is something that they're very keen to tackle. So clearly, there's a spot for open flow there. So the next place where SDN can be applied is to manage the overlay. So what I do at Nasira, um, or what we do at Nasira, is we build a virtual network overlay where you can build a very simple, whatever type of physical fabric you want in the data center. And at the edge, in the vSwitch, um, in a virtualized environment, so in software at the edge, we create a, an overlay mesh. And on top of that mesh, we recreate all of networking. We give you L2, we give you L3, we give you counters, we give you ACLs, and it's all virtualized. And the goal is to give you the operational model of a VM for the network. So you can dynamically create things, you can move them anywhere you want, you can snapshot them, you can rewind them. I mean, it, what it does is it decouples the notions of service model and operations from the physical fabric, right? And for this, this is actually a very difficult state consistency management problem. It's something that SDN is fantastic for. So when SDN comes to the overlay, if it's, if it's an application level overlay like compute or HTTP or something like that, it's not clear where SDN fits in because these things are driven by the application. But if you're trying to recreate network in a virtual networking overlay, something that's become very popular lately with proposals like NVGRE and VXLAN and STT, OpenFlow is actually a fantastic control model to do this, to control setting up tunnels, mapping packets to tunnels, mapping state that goes in and out of tunnels, virtualizing counters. Um, and so, you know, I've been following along, you know, the IETF has kind of picked this up with, with great abandon and they've been working a lot trying to formalize this stuff. And they're really obsessed with what tunneling protocol that you use as opposed to what's actually a more difficult problem. And I think this is a great thing for, for ONF to tackle. However, if we do that, I think it's probably worth considering um, that virtual network overlays are built on top of soft switches, a lot of them. And OpenFlow isn't a perfect fit for that. And so this is an area I think that we can grow either by growing the spec itself or perhaps uh, doing an extension that's suitable for that. So kind of my capstone slide before I've got a quick announcement is that I think the way that SDN should embrace this notion of fabric is to make one very small, uh, minor change in how we think of the world. So the way we think of the world is, is simple, right? We're like, OK, a network has two pieces. It's got a control plane. It's got a distribution or a data plane. And the distribution models are different. So this is arbitrarily complex, and this is arbitrarily complex, but at least they're decoupled. And what I would like to suggest is that we add one more element to these two boxes. So we have three boxes, and that, that, that additional box is, is the fabric. And so I believe that the, the, the fabric problem and the distributed edge banner problems are two different problems requiring two different solutions. And I think that if we acknowledge that they're different, different control planes, different control problems, different interfaces, it'll actually help us extend the architecture that's both scalable, but they, they work very well together. I think it allows us to simplify the forwarding fabric for the, sorry, the, the, the forwarding model for the data plane fabric. But in order to do this, we have to somehow standardize what it means to have a fabric. Does it do multicast? You know, what are the QoS markings? Um, is it just unicast? 
And given this, I think that SDN is more suitable, certainly for the data center, but also will take advantage of a, of a relatively large trend going on today. So that's the majority of the technical content that I have. I just actually wanted to make one somewhat tangentially related announcement. Um, so for those that you don't know, a project that is near and dear to my heart is OpenV Switch, which is a soft switch. It's actually a full kind of SDN switch stack. It, it's uh, run both in software and in hardware. Supports OpenFlow 1.0. Uh, right now there's a lot of work on 1.1 and 1.2, and this is ongoing. Um, but something like pretty big in the history of, of OpenV Switch happened recently, which is this inclusion into the Linux kernel. And to me, like this is after three years of effort. It's like a momentous achievement, I think, for the community at large, because you go from tens of thousands of deployments to millions. And so the fact that it got into the Linux kernel, I mean, it's in the kernel proper, and it's going to be distributed to all these people, I thought, listen, the world's going to change now, right? And after that happened, I was really excited about it, and I kind of sat down the next day, and I started looking at all the news rags. Um, and uh, I realized that there was kind of a tactical PR error, <laughs> which it was upstream in roughly the same time that, that Android was, was released back into the kernel. And so even though Open vSwitch was mentioned, it was kind of glossed over uh, by the Android upstreaming. So what I thought I would do is here with the family is to actually give a proper welcome to, to Open vSwitch being in the Linux in the Linux kernel. So, Ryan, do you mind dimming the lights, please? And then do you mind starting the music? Thank you. At the dawn of a new era. <laughs> From the depths of Silicon Valley comes a new breed of switch in Linux in software. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the ass kicking SDN ready, open flow enabled, open fee switch. <laughs> okay, thanks. That, 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 was, that was actually more for me than for you because I felt like, you know, Open Vsphere should need it. It's, it's, it's time in the sun. So I'm, I'm ready to take questions now. Thanks very much, guys. I mean. Hi, Martin. Uh, after that uh, ending, I feel like I can take liberty in asking you a hard question. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. So I think uh, you're a great presentation, uh, but Thank I you. think you're actually underselling SDN, which I find surprising. So I wanted to confirm that I understood correctly. You're saying that OpenFlow and the SDN shouldn't uh, be virtualizing the hardware and managing the virtualization of the hardware. But aren't you then just oh. throwing away 90% no, 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 no. of the hardware's capability? Oh, 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 no, no, no. So I want to be very clear about this. This is, this is the, the one mistake I didn't want to fall into. So um, if you want to virtualize hardware, SDN's the way to go for sure. I was operating under the assumption that you're building a fabric for a, an overlay that's already virtualized. And in that one case, it's difficult for me to see the technical argument. I think this is a fantastic question, and I'm glad you brought it up, which is if the problem statement is I've decided to virtualize at a different layer and I just want dumb fabric, then I think the SDN fit, and there actually is, is one, but it's, it's more tenuous. But if you want to virtualize the hardware at the edge, you want to push this down in there, it's a more general solution, and SDN is fantastic. Is there a complementary role that you can play in virtualizing both the hardware and the software, even if you've decided to virtualize the edge? Um, th th this is a great question, and this is one that, that we've been trying to tackle for a long time. In, in my opinion, the power, if, if you're virtualizing in the edge, the power of software, especially if you've got huge aggregation of VMs there, um, you know, how slow DMA is to get stuff to the wire, um, the flexibility of software, the edge, it's very difficult for me to make an argument that you're going to both use the hardware and the software if you've got a vSwitch in place. If you don't have a vSwitch or you don't have a position at the edge, I think that there is a strong argument to do this. This is a religious discussion that we'll probably not uh, iron out here, um, but it's a very interesting and important one. 
Yeah, we can have the religious discussion uh, elsewhere, I guess. All right, awesome, thanks. That was Amin Vadat from Google yeah. asking the question. That was a great question, Amin. Alan? Uh, thank you, Dan. I have a question for clarification. When you mentioned extending the SDN fabric by adding a third entity in addition to the data plane and the control plane, what was that entity? I didn't get it. Can you ask, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Can you ask the question again? You didn't hear the question at all? I, no. Okay. I mean, I, mean I, I heard it, I don't understand. All right, when you spoke about extending SDN to the fabric, you said you'd like us, or you suggested that we should think about a third entity in addition to the data plane and the control plane. Yes. What was that third entity? Can you explain and elaborate on that? Sure, I think we should mentally conceptualize the notion of a fabric, and we should fit that within the broader architecture instead of ignoring it. And I think to conceptualize that, I mean, I think we should realize that the forwarding model is different, the state management model, um, the state consistency model, and um, uh, and even the interface to that is different than we normally deal with. And I, I think if we just make that one more segmentation, we'll actually have a cleaner architecture for the data center. That was Alan Weisberger. Okay, last question. Identify yourself, please. Okay, yeah, my name is Daniel Chong, and I work for Acton Technology in Taiwan. Um, we un uh, well, first of all, congratulations for getting OpenFlow into Linux. Um, <laughs> we you. understand that Nisira um, does network virtualization. And uh, you mentioned that um, you are one of the people close to open vSwitch and also open flow. And so right now we understand that both open vSwitch and open flow have um, open sources out there in the network. And uh, you have uh, open flow enabled open vSwitch as you have just announced. So what is the relation between um, Open vSwitch and uh, Open Flow, and uh, related to the uh, both separate sources that are available in the network. Sure. Sorry, I should have been more clear about this. So, so Open Flow is a protocol, right? So this is the way you talk to switches. Open vSwitch is an implementation that supports Open Flow, and there are many implementations of Open Flow out there from many sources. Open vSwitch is the one that I'm uh, associated with, familiar with, um, and uh, it's the one that was recently upstreamed. Um, but thanks for the question. Thank you, Martine. All right, thanks, guys. More than we bargained for.